So one of the first things you'll notice uh, when you type in earth bag is you'll see that the one common thing that we all have in common, no matter how we're building, is that we're using soil, native soil, to fill bags with dirt. And some people will mix cement in there, concrete. Some will mix, uh, you know, sand, uh, other things. Uh, you can put whatever you want in these bags. But the idea is you take these bags or a continuous tube like Cal Earth or Hyper Adobe, and then you fill them up with the dirt mixture, whatever you want to do. Some people like to wet it. Uh, they'll wet it with a hose because what happens when you do that is this dirt. Let me just show you guys. It'll make more. Okay, so some people will wet the soil and they'll do that depending on where you are, what type of soil you have. Like, let's say, let's take a look at my soil here. Now, this soil has a lot of clay in it. You can actually see the clay. And when this gets wet, this clay will be like, if you take your hand and you squeeze it together like this, you see how that forms right there? Now, when it's, when it's a little damp, this will stick like crazy. It's like Play-Doh. The idea is, is you take these bags, you fill them up with dirt, if you wet it down, you tamp it down with the tamper, and then that'll dry and that'll become like a brick. Uh, one of the things that people will do when they, they want to take on this type of building, whether it be adobe bricks or any of the other mentioned uh, methods of earth bag building, they'll take a jar, they'll put some of their soil in it, shake it up, let it sit for a couple days uh, after they add water, of course, so add water to it, and they'll let it sit, and then what will happen is you'll see the dirt settle in layers, and then the layers will show basically the um, percentage of clay that's in your soil, the percentage of sand and silt. And then what they'll do is they'll take that as part of their formula to decide what they need to do to their soil or mend it to make it usable for, for this type of building. Now, the traditional way that people build with earth bags and hyper adobe or cal earth, whichever, whichever you're talking about, um, I, they are different methods, so I, I do separate them. You can see here what I'm doing is I'm using individual sandbags. Now, those tubes, basically, if you just picture one of these sandbags in a continuous tube that's on this big spool, and then what they'll do is they'll roll it out, they'll fill it with dirt as they go or whatever amendments that they have in their soil. They'll tamp it down and they'll just continue to roll this tube to make their house. Pretty cool. And uh, Hyper Adobe is uh, just another spin on that where they look like onion bags, but these bags are more breathable, uh, you'll see. And it's the same method but a uh, little spin on it. So, so there's reasons for it. I'm not gonna go into all that, but uh, there are reasons for you doing one over the other. But, um, you know, there's also advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I would say the advantage to those other two methods as opposed to what I'm doing is if you're building a house out of a continuous tube and it's circular, it's gonna be stronger. Uh, because it's a continuous tube. It doesn't have individual bags. Uh, they say it's faster. However, I'm going to add a little bit to that to show that it's not necessarily faster to build this way. Um, and and I, have, I have some pretty good reasons for that. So what I'm saying here is that basically what I'm doing is a little bit different than those other two methods. And you might ask yourself, well, why would you build with sandbags, earth bags, as opposed to just doing those tubes? You know, the tubes, if they're stronger and uh, more people are doing this out here, then why wouldn't I just do it that way? Well, there's a few reasons. First reason is, is I like the mobility of these bags. You know, in the military, you don't see them building with tubes very much. They're, they, they usually will have sandbags. Uh, sandbags are nice because you can take dirt from any location like this, load it up into your trailer, bag it up, move it to your build site, it's ready to go. Whereas with the uh, Hyper Adobe and uh, Cal Earth methods, uh, Super Adobe, you have to actually have that dirt there on the spot and you have to do your amendments to it and such there because those bags are not mobile. You're stuck in one spot with that. So one of the re things I like about this is the mobility of it. Now, in a case like this, you can see my dog there laying next to the dirt pile. This dirt 
is from a hole that we had dug and it's been sitting here since we started building on this property now i'll take you over here to this hole so what we have over here this is a ultimately is a, a stock pond this is something we're catching water with so what happens when it floods here during the monsoons the water rolls down this hill and this whole property acts as a giant catchment area as opposed to doing roof catchment I have my whole land here for catchment. So it's tens of thousands of square foot of catchment area. It'll fill this up and then I'll take this water and I'll pump it into a pool like this and then I'll do some filtration. I'm still working on that process. But anyways, the point is that because we had this dug out, we have this giant pile of dirt. Now, this giant pile of dirt, I don't wanna keep it here. So what am I gonna do with it? Well, I said, well, you know, we're gonna use it to fill these sandbags full of or earth bags and we're going to fill it up and then we're going to we're going to fill them up and then we're going to take them over to the build site and we're going to build some of our house with this now you can see though there's all these rocks and all kinds of like caliche and stuff like that in here so it has to be sifted like i can't just fill the bags with this stuff i could but i'm not going to so so what i do over here is i use a sifter that i made and I take the dirt and I sift it on top of this. And there's just a screen on top of this grate. This is actually all recycled materials except for this, this stuff. But uh, this here is just recycled fencing and some old two by fours, two by sixes, whatnot. And uh, basically I take the tractor, take the dirt, sift it down here. And then I put my bags underneath this thing and I still have one more of these carts to build. So if you can picture this, I'll have another cart down in here. And then on top of all of these, I'm gonna have a piece of plywood that'll have holes in it, like, like cornhole basically, but there'll be holes for each bag goes. And now when the dirt comes down and it sifts into the, these bags, you can see here, these bags just fill up as the dirt sifted, but I have this giant space here. I wanted to do a proof of concept before I finish this off because, you know, you never know how this stuff's going to work. So in a way, I kind of have a way here to automate filling my bags a little bit. Now, this won't work if you're doing something like adding concrete to your dirt or you're, you're doing something like hyper adobe, super adobe, because with that, you know, they'll add water to it and they mix it. And the reason that they're doing it that way is because they're gonna tamp that dirt down and that's gonna be their walls. And in addition to that, uh, those walls are gonna be load bearing because they're gonna put the beams for the roof on top of those walls. So if you're having a load bearing wall, you want that dirt pretty stabilized. Another reason they'll do it is because once they get done with that, they'll take like cob or most of them are doing cob. I don't like cob, but they'll put cob on the outside of their walls. And if your walls aren't stabilized, what's going to happen is that cob's going to constantly crack. Your walls are going to settle, etc. So there's reasons that it's done and uh, it does work. Um, however, you know, you don't necessarily have to do it that way if you're doing something a little different now what i'm doing is actually uh, a method that i saw online uh, years ago but this is something that i decided i wanted to do with our house i'm using this method that is called eco beam um, it's a company i don't even think they're around anymore but they they did this in uh, africa and they were building these houses and what they were doing was taking sandbags filling them up with sand dirt whatever they're filling them with and they're using trusses for beams for the walls for you know basically pillars made out of trusses and then they're constructing those together like a frame and then the bags are just going in between them and the bags are not load bearing they're basically just in between the beams are what are carrying the loads of the of the roof and everything so I saw that and I said, you know, that's something that I like better um, because a couple things. It's just the design of a house too, in general, that I like. I like the aesthetics of it, nice and square and very modular looking. Um, also, I don't have to worry as much about my walls um, carrying, you know, settling as much because of the loads and whatnot, because uh, the beams are gonna be carrying the load. 
Um, so that changes things up. It actually frees me up a bit to say, you know, I don't necessarily need to add concrete to my dirt. Because one of the things that I don't quite understand uh, about this uh, hyper adobe method is when people add concrete to it, because this is my take on it. I understand why it's done, but it just makes me question what's the point. Because at that point, I mean, you could just build your walls out of concrete. You know, yeah, you're using yet less concrete, but the amount of time you're putting into mixing this and putting the, the walls up, it just makes me wonder why not just use bricks? Why not just use, because the thermal mass is going to be the same with solid concrete, you know, actually more, I think. Um, so, so to me, I don't know. It just seems like a lot of extra work for almost like an ideology of building with dirt but you're really you know you're doing all these extra things to it to prep it so when you're stabilizing it with concrete it's just not something i quite understand but it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me time-wise um because you know one of the things that i realized when i started doing the math for building a house is the walls are only part of the expense of a house i mean the the big expenses are like the roof i just said you know if i'm gonna use the bags for thermal mass I don't want to have to do all this extra work to, you know, have to amend the soil with concrete, mix it together in a mixer. At that point, if I'm using a mixer all day, why don't I just go with a method that's easier, you know? So, so for me, I said, I'll do the bags only on a couple conditions. Number one, I don't have to add concrete to the dirt mix. Okay. That's just something to me that just didn't make sense is number two. I want something that can be automated slightly because I already did a building uh, with earth bags, with these sandbags. I filled every bag with dirt manually. There's my old, um, my old little, little contraption there to hold a couple bags. I'd fill two bags at a time with the shovel. And I did all of them, about 950 of them, to build that other building. And after I did it, it made me learn to say, okay, here's the deal. I don't, I like this, but I, I don't like doing this and I don't want to have to build my whole house this way. So I decided, I said, Hey, if I can do the bags, that would be cool. But I want to make sure that I have somewhat of an automated way of filling those bags. So I came up with this contraption, uh, basically just a sifter. You put the bags underneath it. I still have one more to put. I'll put some plywood over top of this with holes in it. And the dirt will just automatically sift into these bags and they kind of get filled automatically. And then what I'll do is I'll take these bags over to the build site and I'm stacking them right now. There's just a bunch of bags sitting over there. And then I will put my foundation down and then the bags are gonna sit between columns and the columns will hold beams and those beams will support the weight of the roof. So all of these bags are really doing it. They're acting as walls, but they're also, um, you know, they have a lot of thermal mass. So I'm getting all the benefits of thermal mass and I'm saving money because I'm only spending money on the bags. I don't have to fill them with concrete and I'm saving time. So this process is a lot quicker uh, when you're able to automate it. So far, I haven't seen a way that people can automate the uh, Hyper Adobe or the Cal Earth. It's, it's manual. So, so with this, I like, I know there's a way they could do it if they use machines. But um, anyways, so with this, this is kind of puts my spin on it. I can do it on a budget. I could fill these fairly quick, um, which, which is going pretty fast now. And I don't have to add cement or concrete to my, to my mix here uh, to stabilize them. Like I said, it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. So, so that's why I am doing this the way that I'm doing it. And because um, I know I've already had some questions about it. And first thing everybody does when they see you doing something is they want to compare you to another YouTube channel. And be like, well, such and such home is doing this. Why don't you do it this way? And it's like, well, because I like doing it this way. So, and it, they're fair questions. I mean, it's just, it's just that, you know, sometimes you gotta, you, you do have to explain yourself because, you know, they'll see other channels doing it a certain way and they'll think that's the only way, that's the way to do this. Um, and it's not. So there, there's so many ways to build a house. Um, you know, Adobe bricks have been around for a thousand years, at least, uh, people, there's still houses standing that have been made out of adobe bricks and you know no bags around them nothing and they didn't have all this modern stuff they didn't even add concrete to them or nothing so you know you can build a house out of dirt 
but uh, you know, we just decide what spin we want to put on it and what methods. And then so what happens is companies and people want to propri- proprietize something and make it a company. So they'll say, this is the way to do this. And it's just not true. It's just, it's, it's the way they do it. And there are reasons for it, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's the only way. So sometimes you got to think outside the box. And that's what half of this is about to me out here is thinking outside the box doing things that make sense to me and uh you know just running with it so you know that's all we're doing out here sometimes is just experimenting and seeing things that work and don't work so that's that's the answer folks and i'm glad you tuned in uh thanks for everybody that's come over from the podcast or uh the paragraphic video i'll put the links for the podcasts that i've been on as well as the paragraphic video and i'm just gonna start working over and out